So now, let's go back to the book of Mark once more. There's something here that I want to bring out. And in the 11th chapter, we'll just start here. In the 11th verse, Jesus entered into Jerusalem and into the temple and looked around about upon all things. And now the evening was come. He went out unto Bethany with the 12. Now that's the first big lesson of faith. Jesus said, I only say what I hear my father say. I only do what I see my father do. So he didn't just go in there and get mad. Do you remember he prayed all night long before he chose his 12? All night to God. He did not go to bed before he chose those 12 men. Now, here's what is in the garden. That tree, remember the fig leaves? Remember the fig leaf suits? That's what I thought. Did you know God said, oh boy, that ain't going to do. So an animal shed its blood to cover him and his wife. <laughs> So the fig tree is the fruit in the garden. And this is backed up by the teachings of the, the rabbis and so forth, that that was the, the, the fruit. There's a footnote here. Seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, he went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. But when he came to it, he found nothing but leaves, for the fig season had not yet come. So what's the deal here? That was a disobedient tree. It got ahead and grew leaves when it had no business of doing that. Anyway. And in the morning, when they passed by, they saw the fig tree dried up from the roots. No, wait, I need to back up here because this is what I wanted to point out. And they came to Jerusalem. Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out then the soul and bought in the, brought, bought in the temple and overthrew the, the uh, tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer that any man should carry any vessel through the temple. Now listen. And he taught saying, is it not written? Now this would be in Isaiah 56, 7. My house shall be called of all nations the house of prayer. You have made it a den of thieves. So my house in Fort Worth, Texas is a house of prayer. We pray a lot. <laughs> and at every meal, we pray for our partners all over the world. Amen. Amen. And then there are times, other times, when I'm alone, I just start naming off the countries. Praise God. And on, in the meetings that we have, we consistently have China and Taiwan both online. Now, there are people who take their lives in their own hands to do that. Talk about all nations. 
United Arab Emirates, England, Scotland, Ireland. Is your house a house of prayer? We pray about everything. And I'll give you my testimony. Am I doing on time? I had a little thing come up here about the size of a grain of rice. And uh, it I scratched it, it began to itch, and then it, it kind of whipped up and got sore. So I went and had it looked at. And you know, it always, I went and I said, my name's Kenneth Coleman. He said, oh, I know you. He said, he said my, uh, my parents and grandparents have been partners years for a long time. <laughs> I said, thank you. He came back. He said, well, it's malignant. So what? So what do you do? You go to James 5. So Pastor George and Terry Kelly was on the phone. John was on the other phone. And Gloria's uh, really, really good friend, Bebe, was there in our kitchen. So the pastor went to James chapter 5 and read that whole scripture. And he took that oil bottle and put it on his hand and put it there. And a shock went through my hand. I said, that did it. <laughs> I mean it. So then we went to the other doctor that is his specialist. And this woman came out and she said, now, Mr. Copeland, uh, doctor is going to go take a little shave of that. She said, be ready to stay 30 minutes, maybe as much as two hours, because he's going to continue to just shave that till there are no more cancer cells. Okay. So they came out and did the thing. She came back in there, uh, 20, 30 minutes. She said, well, Mr. Copeland, you can go home. There's no more cancer cells. I said, well, of course there's no more cancer cells. <laughs> that anointing killed it. But there was no fear because we stay in faith all the time. Pray in, in the spirit a lot. And so we just began to thank God. So he sewed it up. Tony, you, you can almost see that scar. Never was any problem because of the book. Because of the book. And I like what Brother Hagin used to say. He said, well, I have inside information <laughs> and it's all inside of this book I have. <laughs> yes, it is. It's all there. The apostle Peter wrote, we have exceeding great and precious promises. In my Bible, I wrote covenant right there. I did some teaching on that at KCBC. But this is what prayer is and it's what prayer is for. It is our divine connection. Isn't it wonderful that it is written? And there have been scholars that have tried to debunk it for centuries. They can't. There's too much evidence. There's too many miracles. There's too many healed people. My dad said one time, he said, Kenneth, if I found out there wasn't any Jesus, there wasn't any God, I'd live this way anyway because it works. <laughs> but he said, because it works, I know there's a Jesus and I know there's a God. Amen. Hallelujah. And mama just kept believing and kept, just kept, just stayed strong right up until she left. And people said, 
I'm so sorry you lost your mother. I didn't lose her. That's right. yeah. That's right. I know exactly where she is. Amen. Amen. She knows where I am. I saw her just before she left. Yes. <laughs> but I was driving down the freeway one day because I refused to be full of grief over it. Grief is a killer. It's death's first cousin. And that's what depression is, is grieving over something you haven't lost. Anyway, all of a sudden, it just came on me. I said, fly, little bird, fly. And that was it. So at her home going, and uh, of course it was there at EMIC, and I had a picture that she had, and I remember the time when those pictures were made. I was a small boy, but it was back before colored film. And they, they, an artist colored those pictures. It's just gorgeous. She had her head back on this couch. Mm. I was sitting there next to my dad. I said, now dad, that's who you're looking for. She's in your future. He said, she is in she. I said, yes, sir. And, and that's, that, that's the way she looks now. And he sat there with a smile on his face. God is a faithful God. Amen. And I'll close with this. Glorious little brother Stanley. I'll tell you, if he wasn't the case, he just, he funny little guy. We were there at her grandfather's place at our, just up the road there from our prayer cabin. In fact, um, Gloria's grandfather and grandmother gave us four acres just up the road there from them. And so that's where our prayer cabin was, was built. And uh, so we were at Pop's house and we smelled something. Went in there and the bottom of the mattress was on fire. Stanley! <laughs> Everybody just called Stanley. So, anyway. And he became a journeyman rock mason. In fact, he built the chimney on that, on that house. That house was over 100 years old. And it, it, it was just in shambles and so we had it moved to Crowfoot. The first man that came out and said, Copeland, you know what I'd do? I was, well, <coughs> let her sit. <laughs> so I called Mr. Wooten. He said, I'll move anything. So, <laughs> so they moved it across the road and then built it all together and made it nice. Anyway, there's a highway just not a little way, just a little ways from there. And there's a the curve that goes around this way, but it has an adverse lean. It, it does this. And you really have to slow down on that curve. He was asleep in the right uh, hand of, the, of a pickup, and a young man was driving, was driving too fast. And that pickup just left the road and flew into the trees and burst into fire, into flames. So we just got all the family together and went by the Bible through all these things. Well, not long after that, Gloria was at a women's conference and this woman had been to heaven and, and had seen some marvelous things. And uh, one that she said, the choir came out on this gorgeous stage, this huge choir and everyone was singing hymns of the church. And uh, she talked about the, the hymns that she knew. And then Jesus walked out there and the ceiling flew away because the ceiling was made out of angels and they just all left. And she was seeing this. She said, now the, the next great event in heaven is the marriage supper of the Lamb. And she said, the hall, the huge dining hall and people were doing place settings there. So she came to Gloria after the service. She said, Gloria, now let me tell you about Stanley first. 
I bought him a brand new dress shirt, tie and everything. He cut the sleeves out of that shirt because <laughs> I saw him walk up a ladder with two buckets of mud just leaning forward on the ladder. I told Gloria's older brother, I said, I hope you got your licks in. He said, <laughs> no. He cut the sleeve out of everything he wore. She said, Gloria, you don't know me, but when I was in that large dining hall, there's a young man that came over to me, now, with the faithfulness of God now, and said, would you tell Gloria I was not in that truck when it burned? But she said, Gloria, the strange thing about him, he was the only one that didn't have any sleeves in his garment. <laughs> So we knew it was Stanley. So don't grieve over your loved ones. Grieve not. In there, the letter to the Thessalonians, it says, sorrow not. Look it up. It's the word grieve. Well, sorrow. I had the Lord just really correct me. He said, stop using that word unless you mean it. And he said, the word is apologize. Sorry, 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 sorry. What are you telling me you're sorry? Good for nothing? Is that what you're saying? Words count. I had a man say to me one time, Copeland, you're a too picky. Listen, I'm a way lot more picky about this than I am flying that airplane, and I'm not about to stick that airplane up somewhere like a dart. You have to be really picky about it. And I'm very picky when it comes to my words. Very picky about what I say. If you're going to apologize, apologize. Don't say, well, that was a sorry thing to do. Is that what you want to say? Rude could be a good word. That was a rude thing to do. That word sorrow is part of Isaiah 53. He bore our griefs and carried our sorrows. That word is also translated weakness. It's also translated sicknesses and pains. He bore our griefs and our sorrow. Words count. I said words count. Faith fill words. Dominate yes. the laws yes. of sin yes. and death. Amen. So fill every word with faith. Well, how do I do that? By expecting every word to come to pass. Amen. I was in a particular meeting. There was a very difficult meeting in Florida. And we'd had a lot of, this is in the early days in Oh, it was in a little tent and the, the rain came and the tent fell and I went to the, then people were buying more tapes. This is back in the cassette tape day. So I went to, I, had, I ordered tapes from home. They sent a big box. I went to the post office to get it and all that was left was a big tire mark that went over my box full of tapes. <laughs> and I went out there and I got on it and I started laughing at that tent. Then I'm just soaking wet. And Gloria rolled down and, what are you laughing about? I said, I didn't know I was this big a threat. <laughs> but we just were laughing about it, rolled a care of it over on God. Well, well, in that meeting, I got mad. I didn't cuss. Oh, God, close. Oh, God made me mad. I, oh. ah. And then I was ashamed of myself. And so I was walking around the room and I said, I just said out loud, Lord, I'm not going back over there. Just get yourself another boy. I'm not going back over there and stick up my dust, saith the Lord. 
me get mad like that. I heard him say, did you confess that sin? I said, yes, I did. And I learned a big lesson that day. He said, Kenneth, when you confessed it is not when I found out about it. <laughs> he said, that's when you got rid of it. According to our covenant in first John. If we repent of our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us of that unrighteousness. So be quick to repent, slow to anger, and stay over on the repenting side all the time and do everything you do with one hand on the love of God because the love of God has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. When? The moment you made him more. The church I grew up in, they were you know, big on the word. So coming in contact with um, KCM, you know, and building on the word was just like literally coming back home. Last year we were, um, our car had broken down and we kept on praying and the Lord asked us to scrap the car and sow the seed, the seed from the proceeds, so which we did, so in obedience to his word. And then one particular morning, I was reading the, uh, the proceeds of his presence, and the title was, God Will Get It To You. And as I was reading it, Sister Glory was saying that if you need a, even if you need a house, that God can drop it next door to you. And also if you need a car, he will drop it in your driveway. And I suddenly was like, drop the car in my driveway. And um, so I, I literally just walked Benny up, I tagged him up and said, Benny, God will get this car to us in our driveway. So we started believing, both of us prayed about it and we started believing God for it. So that was on a Sunday. And then on a Wednesday, we had a call that, you know, uh, somebody was coming to our house. The person who drove the car came to us to say, oh, they were coming. I was like, okay, come. But normally when somebody is coming to your house, they don't drive the car in your driveway. They come and they park the car outside. But literally, he actually drove the car into our driveway. And he then asked that the, the, the person who asked, you know, said, okay, uh, do you want this car? And so, of course, yes. And he said, this the car is yours. Mm -hmm. But it's the miracle of, of the fact that God will get it to you, to you. and will put it in your, your driveway. driveway. So no, it was word for word. Word for word. <laughs> God will get it to you. So he did get it to us. And right. the car was in our driveway. So It strengthens your faith. Yeah. And, it, and um, it, comes, it confirms Romans 10, uh, 17, that mm. faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. Mm. Yeah, even though God spoke to us through... Um, Sister Gloria's uh, 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 devotional, devotional. Uh, but we believe it. Mm -hmm. uh, we Come believe that it was God speaking to us, and we diligently confess for, for uh, first day, second day, the third day, uh, and, got the call. Know, and then got the call, and the car was in our uh, driveway. In our <laughs> driveway. <laughs> and we believe that as God is bl a blessing, uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland and Sister uh, Gloria Copeland and and their family. And we are part of that family, so we believe that the same blessing is coming on us. Amen. You know, because they have strong spirit of faith. Mm. The teaching of uh, Brother Kenneth Copeland and uh, Sister uh, Gloria uh, Copeland has the effect it has had in our lives mm -hmm. is trem tremendous. You know, it's priceless. We don't, we don't know, uh, it, there is no way to quantify. It. You know, the anointing, the, the revelation, the, uh, the wisdom that we get in from our association or partnership with uh, Kenneth uh, Copeland Ministry. It's important who you're connected with. That's right. It is. You know, and whatever is happening in that ministry, you know, you can believe God for that. You can believe and receive for that. And God has done that for KCM. He can also do it for, uh, for us right. and anyone else, especially being in partnership with such a ministry as well. It's just stepping out in faith wherever you are and God meeting you there. And now look at how they've grown 55 years later. They're not slowing down. They're not slowing down. <laughs> and, 
and and they're not preaching something else different mm. from what they've preached from you know uh, from the beginning yeah. so that's that's legacy and yeah. longevity mm -hmm. you know um the same word of faith same word of faith yeah. you know the same spirit of faith yeah and also as you said about the anointing when you partner with such a ministry what is on that ministry you can believe god for that that's right it has built our faith it has affected our lives family life ministry in every area so which has been a blessing If we confess our sins, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Period. Believe what that book says, not what your feelings say. Join us for the California Victory Campaign with Kenneth Copeland, November 14th through the 16th. Register at kcm.org slash ca today. Hello, I'm Larry Warren. Today, Brother Copeland shared how prayer is our divine connection to God. We feed our spirits with the Word, renew our minds to the Word, and then pray our exceeding great and precious promises by faith. To help you become more skillful and effective in your prayer life, Kenneth and Gloria Copeland want to give this free teaching called The Seven Steps to Prayer That Brings Results. In this audio series, Brother Copeland takes you through the scriptures to reveal the Bible's formula for successful prayer. You'll learn how to stop fear and doubt and see yourself succeed and meet the needs of others. Faith-filled words dominate the laws of sin and death, so fill every word with faith and expect it to come to pass. To request your free copy on MP3 disc or digital download, go to kcm.org. Kenneth Copeland Ministries' Believer's Voice of Victory magazine has been in print since 1973. Fifty years later, this free monthly publication is sent to partners and friends around the world. In each month's issue, you'll find word-based articles by Kenneth and Gloria Copeland and other guest teachers and ministers. Let these words of life build your faith and strengthen your spirit to live a victorious life. You can read the BVOV magazine online or request your free subscription by mail. Go to KCM.org for all the information. We'll see you tomorrow. This is Brother Larry reminding you, God loves you, we love you, and Jesus is Lord. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Watch the Believer's Voice of Victory broadcast free on KCM.org.uk or KCM's Roku channel. If you would like a free copy of the broadcast to put into your faith library, you can download it on kcm.org.uk straight to your computer or mobile device. Keep your heart full of the Word of God and continue to grow in faith. Every believer has a voice, and it is the voice of victory.